Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hey, welcome to Shields Live Thursday. I'm here in lovely Davenport, Iowa, once again. Um, but uh, yeah, just glad to have you with us again. Um, decent day out there, not as humid. Uh, we got a nice rain yesterday. I always like to do my weather report. I don't know why I feel obligated <laughs> to do that, but I do. Um, but I think uh, just a couple announcements. Rain. What's that? <laughs> I think it's because we haven't had any rain. That's true. It's that's unusual. true. Uh, but I do have a couple of announcements. Uh, right now, we're currently running our, our Shield sidewalk sales um, through Saturday. Uh, good deals. We got 25% off on threads and stabilizers, 10% off of uh, Kimberbell stuff. Uh, great deals on cabinets, furniture, uh, and, and, and machines, four models, things like that. So if you're interested, it's a good time to, to jump on it and maybe stock up uh, for for your summer or your fall sewing. Um, also, we are going to do a, another dime virtual event. This is going to be on edge to edge quilting with uh, the, the dime software. And uh, that will be July 26th. It is absolutely free. Uh, we encourage you to sign up, even if you don't think you can make it at the, at the live event, um, because it will be available to watch for another 48 hours. Uh, the really nice thing about this is you'll get a nice discount on some of their stabilizers and, and hoops and whatnot during this event. So really want to encourage you to try to sign up for that. Again, you don't have to attend it live, um, but it's still a good time to stock up on some stuff. Um, yeah. Otherwise I think Jan's going to talk more about scan and cut. We're going to cut some fabric today. Uh, she showed me a, a couple of things that she did yesterday and you know, it still shocks me how intricate you can cut with that thing from time to time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, again, thanks for uh, joining us, liking, commenting, all that good stuff, sharing. And, uh, Enjoy it, and we'll we'll see you next time. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Tim. Thanks. Yeah, it looks like Tim was having a little buffering problem today because he's he's on a different um, carrier than I am. So I he I noticed things were coming and going a little bit down there today. So so how is everybody today? So we're going to do a little more scan and cut cutting, um, but today we're going to kind of switch gears and think a little bit more about. Um, like uh, if you're doing traditional machine applique that you can, you don't have to be do embroidery. Like last week we talked more about embroidery and how to produce a cutting file from our, our embroidery design. And this week we're gonna talk about stuff that goes like for sewing. So let's say you have a traditional machine, machine applique pattern you would like to do and you would like to cut your pieces out with the scan and cut. So we're going to talk about that this week. Um, I'm actually going to show you an example that I do. I do a, um, I do machine applique. I don't do like, I don't, I like to do, um, what do they call, call it permanent bond applique. So um, I'm going to show you one of my samples that I did that way, but you would do the same concept for if you're doing, doing the, um, the traditional machine applique and, and sewing it down. Mine is permanently bond, bonded. So there's two different, app, we'll talk about the different um, heat and bonds again here. So, um, so we're gonna kind of go a different way. We're gonna produce our own patterns this time from our pattern pieces that we have from these designs, okay? So there's this is another way of doing that. And then we're also gonna cut some fabric um, that you don't have, um, that you don't have um, any bonding agent on. So to show you there's a difference in the way you have to cut that and the different kind of blade you use for that. So, so we're gonna kind of do a little bit uh, more on the sewing end this time, okay? So let me switch my camera over and let's go, go take a look at some of these little projects. So give me a second here, get to this one and my other camera and my other microphone. Okay put my machine over here so I can see a little bit better. Okay, so I've got my scan and cut ready here. And what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna talk about, this, is, this would be what you would do if you have a, a pattern for traditional machine applique that you just wanna cut your fabric out and then sew around it with your sewing machine. My example is actually a um, permanent bonded um, uh, applique pattern. Um, I have a gal that she, she's from Dyersville, actually. I really like her designs. Um, her name, it's Fabrications by Doris. And she does a lot of these permanent bonded um, 
patterns. And so I like to cut these with my scan and cut. She cuts them with a pair of scissors, but I've always cut these with my scan and cut. And she has a lovely website called Fabrications by Doris. So you can go look at some of her stuff. It's really fun to do. And I do them with my scan and cut. Um, and I love this tree. This is one of my favorites. It's called Majestic Pine was this pattern. And I bought this pattern from her a long time ago and have made it made it up. And I've got it here. I'll show it to you at the end, um, all made up. But this tree is really awesome. And look how intricate that tree is. And this is cut out of fabric with a with heat and bond on the back. Okay, so but this is going to be permanent bond. So I did a couple of them here. I've got a couple of the dark colored ones, but then I've got this lighter colored one. So here's a lighter colored tree that I did. And this one's also got, I didn't, the paper's still on this one. So, but that's done with the heat and bond, okay? So we're, I'm going to show you how I did that. And um, we're going to cut that out today. So the difference, let's talk first about what we're going to be putting on our fabric. So heat and bond, um, just like I got to break my scan and cut back up. But heat and bond has two different forms. So last week we used this for our embroidery the heat and bond light, because this one is sewable. You can sew through this. So if you're going to be doing like this tree, for instance, and then you're going to sew around it with your sewing machine, you would need to use heat and bond light on the back of your fabric. Okay. Now that is not the case for me this time. I'm not going to sew through this. I want it to be permanently bonded to my other fabric. So I am going to be using heat and bond ultra hold and this is the permanent bonding kind so this is in a red package and then the light is in a purple package okay so this is what's on the back of my piece of fabric since i want to permanent bond it is heat and bond ultra hold okay so that's the differences in the heat and bonds so those are the two i use and then with this pattern of course with mystic pine it was a pat just a piece it was a piece of paper with pattern on it you know and and this gal draws her own patterns they're all hand drawn and all of her designs are hand drawn so um this pattern's inside here i, I won't use it i've already got it out here so i can put it in my mat but we're going to scan this so you know we don't have a digital copy of this we have a hard copy that's printed off on a piece of paper so here's that piece of paper okay with the with the, the tree on it all right so we're going to take this and i'm going to put this in my scanning mat and you can put this on a on a um, sticky mat if you want but i like to use my scanning mat when i'm doing especially if it's a pattern that i don't i want to make sure that i'm not going to damage it with the sticky or anything so i love the scanning mat so the scanning mat has just has this little flipper page and you slide the page up in there and there's no stick them on this one so i always use this when i'm doing stuff like with my patterns like that, um, that I don't damage my pet, my original patterns. Okay. So here's my tree. Now I do know, and it depends on the maker, this particular maker, Doris uses hers when she draws hers, she draws them mirrored already. So remember when we cut our fabric, I like to cut it face down. So this is already mirrored. So I don't have to mirror it again. It's already mirrored so that when I flip it over, so see here it is on the piece of paper like this. So this is the back. And then when I flip it over, here's the front. Okay. So, so hers are already mirrored in her pattern. So make sure you read your patterns closely to see if they've mirrored their designs in there. And what we're going to do, I've got this in my scanning mat. We're going to make a pattern off of this piece of paper for our scanning pad. So we're going to use the scanning function. And we've talked about the scanning function before, so I think this is going to look somewhat familiar to you. But I'm not going to cut this out of this piece of paper down here. So that's what scan direct cut means, that you're going to cut it, you're going to cut your fabric or your or your piece of paper right out of this piece of paper. But that's not what I'm going to do. I want to scan to cut data. I want to produce a scanning, I want to scan and produce a file that I'm going to cut out of something else. So we're going to use the second button today. Okay. And this is black and white. There's a couple of different modes and I've got it in black and white mode right now. If I hit the little wrench, I can put it into color mode, but I need it black and white because my 
my graphic is black and white. Okay. And I'm going to hit start and it's going to scan this in. I have to hit start one more time. So I'm going to scan this in, this tree. And I'll show you how I made my pattern. Now, sometimes I do these patterns and I use my software too, but I want to show you that it is very possible to do this right on the machine. You don't have to use your software if you don't like the software. Um, this is a pretty much standalone machine and I do a lot of the stuff right on the machine. If it's a little hard to see, it is a smaller you know, screen. So sometimes it's a little harder to see what you need to clean up. And then I bring it to my um, computer to do that. Okay, so here's my tree. It's scanned in. Now there's different ways to, to scan. Now I can scan just around the outside edge or I can scan the insides and the outsides. So this particular tree, if I hold this up again, I got another piece of paper here. So you can tell that there's things inside that need to cut and outside. So I need to trace both sides. So I'm gonna hit the second button and trace it. And then I'm gonna take my little cropping tool and I'm gonna crop it up so that I'm not you know, getting everything. I'm just getting my tree on that page, okay? I'm sure I got that pulled out for not far enough here. There we go, all right? And that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit preview. And okay. And then I'm going to save it into my machine. You could also save it back to a USB or you can send it directly to your computer for your software. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and save it in the machine. So I'm just gonna save it in my machine. But I am going to tell you, especially if, the, if this is hand drawn very often, so we don't need this anymore. We're done scanning. I'm just going to hit the little house button up here and hit OK. And then I'm going to eject my Mac that has my graphic in it. So we're going to set this over here. All right. So now we need to go find our design because we want to cut this design out. So I'm going to retrieve the data. And I'm going to go back to my machine. And here it is right here. The second one. I, I did one yesterday to practice because I hadn't done this for a while. So, all right. So here's our tree. Now I'm looking at my tree and I'm seeing dark and light spots on my tree. Now I'm going to tell you when you get designs like, say, traditional machine applique patterns, that a lot of those, um, those, um, creators actually hand draw their stuff well if you if they do very often you the machine will trace on the inside of the design and on the outside of the line i should say so i can see that my design looks dark in several places and you can probably see it too there's some extra dark looking spots so to me that means that it is actually traced on both sides of this black line because it's a little thicker because it was hand drawn. Okay, so you very likely will have to do a little cleaning up to get this to cut nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to go into edit. And I can bring it up bigger, but I think I can see well enough when it's small for a bit. So let me see if I can get just a little closer with the camera here. So you can see a little bit better. It's a little hard with the scan and cut because I have to watch for the, it gets very shadowy on the screen. So I can see I've got a little red mark right down here. Well, that probably I don't need. So I'm going to hit trash and I'm going to keep looking at these little spots. That looks like a dark spot to me. I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. Now, this little piece in here, is this piece. I can see it's this piece right here. So I want that in there. So I'm just going to hit the selection key and I'm going to hit and look and see if there's, well, there is actually another little piece in there. So I think I'll take that out because I don't think I need that one. Now this must be like the whole tree. Can you see? Because it does, it will scan like all the way around the whole tree. But so that must be the whole tree. So let's take a look. So if I pull this out, see that's my whole tree there. 
Okay, so we want that, obviously. So I'm going to hit undo and leave that there. So let's hit the select key again. And now this one is smaller. Can you see? And if I pull this out, look, it's like half the tree. <laughs> it's only like half the tree. So I don't need that because that was on like the inside of the line. So I'm going to hit the trash button, and get rid of that. Let's see what else we got here. So here's another little itty bitty little red dot right up here. Probably don't need that because I can see there's still some darker pieces here. So we're going to get rid of that. And here's another little piece. If I pull that out, see it traced on both sides of my line. So I think we can get rid of that. And let's see. Now that is going to be this piece here that you can kind of see the little red mark. It's this piece on my tree. So I always keep my graphic close to me when I'm doing this so I can tell if I'm doing what I want. Okay. So that I think is what I want. So I'm going to hit the select key again. And I want that piece because that's this piece here on my tree. Right here. And this is what happens though with they, they scan very well but it often will do this if you have a hand-drawn design that you have a thicker line that it's scanning on both sides of the line okay so let's see i think that one i want to keep so let's hit it again okay so this piece down here is one of those dark pieces i can see so i'm going to get rid of that one and then the, and here's another one and another one so i'm just kind of going through and seeing and if I don't think I need that one or this one. So that's another of those little doubled places. Here's another little doubled place right here. So I'm just kind of going through and checking out my design. That looks pretty good. Right, that one needs to come out too because that was a doubled spot. And here's another doubled spot. And another one. And here's another one yet. So I, I spend a lot of time cleaning up you know, when I do this kind of designs. Now this piece here, I think is this piece. So I want that in there. So that piece I want to leave in there. Let's hit the select key again. So here's another little bitty piece over here. Probably don't need that. But what it does is it kind of scans these hand-drawn designs on both sides of the line because the line's thicker. Then then you just have to clean up your design. And I often do do this in the computer just because it's on a bigger screen yeah let's see i think i need yeah i don't think i need that one either all right we're still got a dark doubled spot there i'm just hitting the delete looking where my little red mark is and now that piece is this piece here on my tree so i want that let's see what the next one is that one is this one so i want that so i think that might be it and that's the whole tree and then we're back. So I think maybe I got all the little pieces. Okay. So now let's let's zoom in a little bit and we'll look at it a little closer. Pull it up. Oops, second here. I want to undo. I just hit a I made a boo-boo. There we go. All right. So let's look and see. Let's move this up a little bit. And it looks pretty good. And see, most of the tree does not looks the same color now. So as I look at it, I'm seeing that there's no like dark and light spots anymore. So those double tracings are gone. All right. So just be aware that when you scan something, especially if it's intricate like this, you may have to do just a little bit of cleaning. All right. So we got it all cleaned up and that looks good. So now the next thing I want to do, so I don't make that boo-boo I just made. I'm going to hit my select button. I'm going to hit select all. And then I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to go to object edit. And I want to group it. So that way, everything is all in one piece. So now I can move my tree around as one piece. And I know I won't miss one of my little spots. OK, so there's our tree. So let's talk about cutting it now. All right, so when we go to cut this. We're still going to be using the same blade. So give me a second here. I'm going to push this back for a minute so I can put my mat down to put this on. I'm going to cut it out of my dark blue here. Okay. And this is a batik actually. And it's got heat and bond ultra hold on the back. Okay. Because this is going to be a permanent bond um, project. If you're doing it and you're going to dr um, drive around it with your sewing machine, sew it down. Then you're going to be using heat and bond light because you can sew through that all right so let me take this off i'm going to put this down on my mat 
And I may just flip the door up, open here for just a second. Just a minute. Flip the door shut so we can put this down. And I like to put this down face down. And remember we said, I know that for sure her patterns are mirrored already. So I don't need to mirror my pattern in my machine. It's already mirrored. Many people that do applique patterns for quilting do that. So just read your directions and it'll say if the patterns are mirrored or not. The designs, I should say. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and use my brayer, my favorite little tool to make sure that this is well stuck down. I am using my fabric, gold fabric mat, okay? If you have one of the older machines, you will need to use your um, either standard or low tech mat with the high tech adhesive sheet on it with your fabric down on the mat. If you're using one of your older machines and I still use that mat, here's that mat, I have it here. I thought I might use it today. I use it sometimes, I still use it. It's got that high tech sheet on, it's really super sticky and I have it marked as fabric. So I just leave this one as my fabric mat all the time and I still use this one too, but we are gonna use the, um, we're going to use the fabric mat, the actual fabric mat today. All right. So I've got that down nicely with my brayer, with my Heat and Bond Ultra on it. I'm going to go ahead and load it into the machine. And this takes just a couple minutes to sew out or to uh, cut out. It looks like it would take forever, but it, it doesn't take too long. Okay. And I have my standard auto blade the black one that i have marked as fabric so this is my fabric blade okay so i always have my extra holder and my extra blade just for fabric and i have that in my machine and it's going to do its little trick again every now and then it does this little trick that it doesn't like to there we go drop back in got this all ready and now i'm going to hit okay over here on my screen and let's go scan so we know where the tree needs to be. So I'm gonna hit okay one more time and then here's my scanning button. So I'm gonna scan. I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit so it won't hit the wall. And I'm gonna scan so we know where we're gonna put our tree. So has anybody ever cut out like your traditional machine applique pieces this way? Like if you were gonna machine applique a, mach uh, a quilt? This is a fun way to do it. All right, so here's my tree on my fabric, and I'm gonna just bring this up a little bit because I can tell it's a little too low. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna hit okay. We're ready to cut. So I'm gonna hit please select and cut. All right, I have it on auto pressure because I'm, I'm using my auto blade. I have the speed on three, half cuts off, going to take about three minutes to cut. So I'm going to hit the start button and let it cut. And then we can talk about a couple other things while it is cutting. So if you have the older machines like the CM model machines, you will have to use your standard mat or your low tech mat with that high tech adhesive sheet on it. Okay. Also, you will be using your standard blade, which is the turquoise one. Okay, set at, I set it at either four or five for the blade depth, and I set my pressure at either four or five. You will need to do a test cut with your older machines. I always, and fabric is very, it's not as consistent as paper. So um, I find that I have to do a little more test cutting when I'm using my standard blade. Okay, because especially when I'm cutting fabric because it's not as consistent. So that hopefully that helps the people that are using the older machine that you have to set your own pressure and your own blade depth. But this machine does a really good job cutting fabric with the auto blade. And you just have to make sure that it's that it's uh, well stuck down to your mat. And I like to cut it with the, the face down with the with the fabric down. So it looks like it's doing a good job. This this is a such a pretty a pretty tree, and um, I love to cut this out. And it's very intricate, as you can see, and the machine does a really great job on it. 
I think the original, when I originally did this, I actually did have my CM 650 and I cut it with this blade cut on, it was either four or five and my pressure was either four or five. I'd have to just do a test cut to verify, but I know I cut this out on my standard older machine when I did it originally, but the auto blade is pretty cool. Took some of the guesswork out of it with that auto blade. All right, so there is our tree. It's all cut out. You can see that it, it did lift a little bit of the paper, but that's okay. So I'm just going to take a hold of my, my fabric here on the corner, and I'm just going to pull it up gently from the mat. And with any luck at all, it'll leave our tree. Look at there. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so there's our tree. All right. So I'm going to grab my little spatula here. This is a little hard to get. You kind of got to get it started and then it comes up. And just be careful that you don't rip anything. You know, there is, this is pretty intricate. So it's got some small areas on it. Just be careful when you're pulling it up. And I use my little spatula to get it started. All those little branches. All right, let's see if I can get this one, get it going here. There, it's coming. Just take it a little bit at a time. All right, so there's the tree. Isn't that neat? So you can see I made that pattern off of my traditional applique pattern and cut it out with my scanning cut. And it does, does a beautiful job of doing it. So there's the tree. So go check out Doris's stuff. It's called Fabrications by Doris. Her stuff is really beautiful. And she has lots of beautiful, um, especially outside, like um, a lot of outdoors scenes and, and animals and stuff. And they're really pretty. So anyway, so there's the tree. So what do you think of that? So that's one way that you can cut. Another way you can cut and make your own pattern off of a piece of paper that we scanned in. All right, so let me grab, let me get these off of here. We'll need this mat again here. These little, these are the little pieces that cut out in the inside, the middle. Take those off. Anybody have any questions about what, how I did that? Okay, so there's my mat ready to go for the next project. So I have another project that I wanted to show you that I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create my own pattern. Um, so this is one way I did it. And then the other way, i got to find my piece of paper now. Just a second. Oh, here it is. All right. So I'm going to create, I want to cut some fabric out. I, I want to do a whole bunch of these little tumblers and put them together in a quilt. Okay. So this little tumbler was actually a ruler that came with my um, orange pop rulers from Kimberbell. So this is the little tumbler die ruler that comes from Kimberbell. And I, I really wanted to cut these all out, but I didn't want to have to sit there and cut them all out with a rotary cutter, okay? Because I'm kind of dangerous with a rotary cutter. I thought maybe I'd like to do them on here. So what I did is I took my little tumbler ruler, okay? And I'm not gonna lay it on this piece of paper, but I laid it down on my piece of paper and I just took a Sharpie marker and traced around it, around it and made this template. So here's my pattern off of my little ruler, okay? And of course, when I'm doing these as a, um, as a pattern, and I'm gonna be sewing these together, I don't want any bonding agent on the back of these. I wanna be able to sew them together without any bonding agent. Let's see, I thought I had, let's see, what happened to my, I had one tumbler that I cut out here, but I don't know what happened to it. Oh, here it is, I found it. So here's a tumbler, but see, I don't, I don't, I don't want any bonding agent on this. I just want to be able to cut this out and sew them together. So see, there's no, there's no heat and bond on the back of this, okay? Now it is a little harder to cut fabric without anything on it, but I have found something that really works well for me. And um, 
we carry it here in the store. It's a product called Terial Magic, and it's a very, very stiff starch. I mean, like really stiff. So what you do is it tells you on the back of the label, you know, how to do this, but you um, wet your fabric with the Terial Magic, let it dry. And I think it's maybe 15 to 20 minutes. You let it dry and then you iron it. Okay. And it makes it very stiff. So these pieces of fabric I have stiffened today and you can see that it's pretty stiff. Okay. It's, 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 it's sort of like paper when it's done, it's quite stiff. Okay. So these, these just have the terial magic on them. And we're going to use one of these and cut out a tum a couple of tumblers. Okay. So here are my fabrics. So that's what I did earlier and don't do them too early, too far in advance, because if you do, they'll, they'll, they'll get softer. Like this one I did last night and you can see it's already quite a lot softer than this is. They, especially when it's humid and it's been kind of humid here the last few days, but it, it takes the, it takes the um, stiffness out. Okay. So this one would be ready for me to sew it together. Okay. Into my little quilt or whatever I want to do. All right. So first thing we need to do then is to get our pattern just like we did before. So we're going to put this in my scanning mat again. Okay, put this in my scanning mat so we can make this pattern. And again, I just traced around my little template here with my Sharpie marker. I'm gonna load my fabric or my uh, scanning mat in. And let's see here. So we're gonna finish the cutting part here. Let me go back up to the screen so you can see that. And we're all done with our tree. Now I am gonna back up and I'm gonna save my tree in the machine again because I would like, and it's grouped now, and I'm gonna hit okay. And it's gonna say overwrite or new. And I want the one that we fix. Cause remember we went all that through all that fixing. So I'm gonna hit overwrite and I'm gonna keep that in the machine. So then I have that if I wanna cut that out later again. Okay. So I'm gonna save that in the machine. All right. So we got that and I'm gonna hit the little house button to go back to the beginning. And then we're gonna, now we're gonna scan the little tumbler and we're gonna hit scan again, same button scan to cut data. Cause we're not cutting it out of this piece of paper. We're gonna cut it out of fabric. I'm gonna hit this. And again, it's in black and white. So I'm going to leave it in black and white mode and hit start and start one more time. So it's going to scan it in, get rid of some of my little chunks of fabric off my table here. And we're going to talk about another blade because this one, we're actually going to use a different blade too, because since there's no state, there's no bonding agent on it no heat and bond. All right, so it's traced my little tumbler. So here's my tumbler. Now this is going to be a little different. Remember, there's two, there's several buttons here. This scans the intersection. I still haven't figured out why I would want to use that, but there must be a reason for it. So I'll keep looking into that. The first button here just traces around the outside edge. The one we used for the tree traced on the inside and the outside because we had things inside a tree that needed to cut out like these dark spots right here. This one does not have any of those. This one's just around the outside edge. I want it. So I am just going to choose the first button and just tr trace around the outside edge. I'm going to go ahead and crop into my tumbler so I don't get any extra extraneous stuff I don't want. Okay, like that. I'm going to preview it and it looks pretty good. This one looks pretty good. Now I think this one doesn't look like it um, traced on both sides of the line. I used a real thin marker, so sometimes that it's okay and sometimes it's not. All right, so I'm gonna hit the little button to save it in the machine. And it's gonna save and then there's my pattern. So I'm gonna click okay. And there's my pattern. So I'm gonna hit the house button because we're done with the pattern creation. Take this out. All right, we'll get our get our 
fabric mat back up here. All right, so let's get our fabric. Now this time our fabric, I often, when I use the heat, when I use heat and bond, I always, I always um, turn the, the fabric and mirror it and, and fabric down. But when I use this, this is in the fabric. This terial magic is like soaked into the fabric and the whole, all the fabric has got terial magic in it. So I actually do cut these usually right side up because very often when I'm cutting fabric without um, heat and bond on it, I'm wanting to cut like maybe do a fussy cut and have it a certain thing in the middle of my tumbler. This particular fabric is not like that. So I'm just gonna cut it in the middle somewhere. But I often like, I always cut this one usually right side up because the Terio Magic has stabilized that fabric all the way through. Okay. So let's go ahead and put our piece of fabric on here. And you can also cut them right um, face down either way. But see the fab, the, the Terio Magic really makes this stiff. So it's kind of like paper now. And I'm going to use my brayer and really make sure that it's well adhered to my fabric mat but you still need that fabric mat because it's very sticky okay so there is my piece of fabric with my terial magic let's go ahead and load this in and we'll bring up our design and check out our design to make sure it's okay so let's go ahead and retrieve the data from the machine and it's over here here's the tumbler and i'm going to blow it up and just check it i think it's okay though it looks it doesn't look strange you know it doesn't look dark anywhere everything looks pretty good i think it's fine sometimes i bring it really big and look at it but i think it's fine this one i tried to use a real narrow marker so that it, it wouldn't do the double um the double scanning and i think it was okay yeah it looks pretty good all right so i'm gonna hit okay i'm happy with that and then i'm gonna scan so that we know where to put the tumbler and hit start so we're gonna let it scan and then we'll put know exactly where to put our tumbler scan it in Okay, let's see. So here's our fabric up here. The tumbler, tumbler needs to come up. So we'll bring it up and kind of set it in the middle. And if you were doing this like for fussy cutting, you, you could then manipulate your tumbler to the area of the fabric you wanted to have showing in the middle of it or whatever. Okay, I'm going to click OK. And now we're going to do some more cutting. However, we're going to use a different blade. So I get a lot of questions about this. And in the instruction booklet, it tells you that the tan blade is for fabric. But the trick is the tan blade is for fabric with no bonding agent. So there's no heat and bond on the back of this fabric. We have terial magic on it, but there's nothing on the back of the, the fabric. So now we can use this tan blade. The tan blade, and we talked a little bit about blade, blade um, angles last time. This blade, the black one, we said was a 60 degree blade. So it's pretty steep. You know, it's, it's got a pretty steep point on it. Okay. The 40, the, the, um, the standard blade, the older uh, original ones from the older machines, these are 45 degree blades. So they're kind of in between, but this blade is a 35 degree blade. So it's even less steep. It's a little flatter. So it does a very good job cutting the fabric without anything on the back, okay? So we are gonna be using the tan blade this time. I'm gonna put the top back on here. And this is an auto blade also. So I only use this for fabric that I don't have any heat and bond on the back of. So I'm gonna take my regular fabric blade out and put it up here. And we're gonna put this tan blade in. So this is the only time I use the tan fabric blade, they call it the fabric blade, is when I don't have any 
uh, heat and bond on the back of my fabric, okay? I, when I'm using Terio Magic. So I'm going to put this in. And again, it's an auto blade, so all I have to do is put it in. If you want to, you can do a test cut, but I'm pretty sure this is going to cut okay because I've done it several times. I'm going to hit please select, and I'm going to hit cut. Okay. It's going to take about a minute. Auto pressure on this one, the speed of three, half cuts off. If you're using your old, your older machine, I usually put my blade on three or four for fabric without a bonding agent and then the pressure on three or four. So depending on, on, you may have to do some test cutting to see what works the best for your machine. Every machine is a little different, so I have to test cut with fabric. So if you have like a CM model, I would say three or four with your standard blade, the, the tur tur turquoise one, and then your pressure at three or four. But since we have an auto blade on this machine, it's just going to do it for us. Okay. I am using the tan blade though. Okay. So let's hit start and see what happens. We're going to cut out our tumbler. And I did this for a class a couple years ago that we were making a little table topper. And so we cut the tumblers out this way. So it is nice if you have a bunch of these things to cut them out like this. All right, let's see how we do it. All right, so there's our fabric. We'll see if it cut. Look at there. Very nice. Got to find my little, my little spatula here. There we go. And there's my tumbler. And you can see this one's still pretty stiff. Okay. The one I did last night's a lot softer. Okay. And it cut out fine too. But this one's still quite a bit stiffer. And as you work with these, and you and like they, especially when they set out in the humidity, they will soften up quite quite a lot. And it and it does it pretty quickly. So when you're working with this, make sure you don't you don't get your fabric ready until you're ready to use it. So let's do one more so you can see. Let's do this this darker orange one. This one's kind of neat. We'll do another one here. Got to find my, oh, here it is. So I did the Terio magic on these just a couple hours ago. Yes, you can cut more than one at a time. So I could put, like, I've got three more on here, Sandy. So like, yeah, you want me to do that? We'll just do that. I'll just put all three of them on here. I've got three more of these pieces of fabric. And I can cut them all out at the same time. So let's just go ahead and get these adhered. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay. And this one, I'm going to push this back so I can take this out for a minute. Make sure I get this down on the mat. Well, when, you, when you're working without the bonding agent, you do want to make sure that um, you have them well adhered to the mat. Okay, get that, put this back in. So we, we got three of them on here, so we can cut three. All right. So let's go back up here to the screen. And it finished cutting, so let's back up a screen. And I've only got one up here right now, right? So I want to go ahead and edit. And I want to object edit. And then I'm going to add some. So if I hit the second little button here with the plus sign, I can make it three. So I have three total tumblers on here. And this tumbler is the same. The reason I didn't mirror it, it is the same on both sides if you're worried. Actually, it's, it is right side up, so we didn't have to mirror it. If you turned your fabric over, I would probably still mirror it just to verify that it is symmetrical because <laughs> sometimes they're not. So in this case, we're cutting from the top, so it's okay. You didn't have to mirror it. But if if you are cutting from the back, if you do turn it over and put the back, the front side down, you would want to mirror it. So here's three. We got three of them here. All right. So let's go back and we'll scan again and hit start. And then we can put all three of them on at the same time. And if you want to, Sandy, one of the things I often do when I'm cutting a whole bunch of things like this, I could, um, there's a couple different ways you can do this. I have three pieces of fabric, but if I had one great big piece of fabric, I could see about how many I thought would fit on here 
And if you hit this button right here, it actually will arrange them on the mat so that they will all fit and they'll be fairly close together so that you can um, optimize your fabric. So in this case, I have three separate pieces of fabric, so I'm just gonna move them. But this button here allows me to organize them on a full mat. So I could have taken like a piece of 12 by 12 fabric and, and put the heat or the, um, the terial magic on it and then use the whole thing on the mat. And then I could have filled the whole mat with tumblers, okay? So that's the other option. But we're going to use, we're just going to move them because I've got three pieces of separate fabric. And I'll do all of these together. But, you, but the other question that a lot of people ask, you can only cut one layer of fabric at the same time. Okay. You can't put multiple layers on the mat together because they won't stay. All right. So I've got them all on there. I've got to move to each of the separate pieces of fabric. I'm going to hit please select, cut. It's my auto blade. I've got the tan blade in there and I'm going to hit start. So what I was hoping with this series of, of uh, videos is to, to keep you um, clear on which blades you're supposed to be using at which times, you know, what kind of blades you use for what kind of cutting you're doing. Um, and I use, like I said, I use the, the separate fabric blade like this for most of my cutting, unless I'm not using bonding agent. And then I use the tan blade, which is for that. All right. Did a real nice job, I think. So let's see. Pull these off. Let me pull this back just a little bit. So there's another tumbler. I just had some scrap fabric, so I made the made them plenty big enough so that I knew they were going to be big enough. Okay. Pull these off. And I do want, I always want to um, clean my mat off really well because you'll get a lot of strings and stuff. So here's another tumbler. So I've done a lot of these tumblers on my scan and cut because they, I've, I like to cut, I like to use these little tumblers and they're kind of hard for me to cut with a rotary cut, cutter because I'm always a little too close to my fingers, if you know, they're not very big. So <laughs> a little too close to my fingers for that. So there's some tumblers. Okay. So that's another way you can use it. And there's no bonding agent on there. We can just get ready and sew them together. And then they'll be ready to put into my little table topper or whatever I'm using them for. Okay. All right. So we talked this week about the tan blade that is used for fabric without heat and bond. We talked about heat and bond ultra, which is the permanent bond. You do not sew through it. We've talked about heat and bond light, which is the heat and bond we can sew through for applique, traditional or for um, machine applique. We have made our designs in the machine from our pieces of paper. Okay, like your applique patterns often come in a pat, you know, in a in a pattern like this one did, and then they're just pieces of paper, and you can scan them in and make your designs off of them. Okay. And we've used the fabric, the standard fabric mat. We've used the um, scanning mat this week. And next week we're going to work with the um, we're going to work with the rotary blade. The rotary blade also cuts fabric beautifully, just like we've been doing here. And we can use the rotary blade for that. It does take a little longer than the standard blade. So I often um, don't use it for my general cutting like this, but it does a wonderful job on hard to cut fabrics like felt. Um, so we're gonna cut some felt next week with the rotary blade. I'm gonna show you how to set it up because you do some setup um, for the rotary blade on the machine. And then um, we'll talk about that and then we'll use the rotary blade to cut some fabric. So I'm gonna put the camera up here so I can say goodbye, but I wanted to show everybody the, the permanent bonded applique design that I did with the tree so you can see the whole thing. I have it here and it, I framed it. So, so I have that hanging above my bed. I like, I like her stuff. I've got a couple of her, her pieces there that I've made. So 
but this is what the tree looks like all done. I don't know if you're probably going to get some, some light, but here's my tree with the sky and the, and the um, mountains or the, you know, the trees and the grass and like that. So that was a real fun piece. And I like to do her thing. She has a lot of fun stuff to do and I've got quite a few yet to do. So I'm going to try to get some of those done this, this summer, I think. So I've been wanting to play with it again. So next week we'll work with the rotary blade to continue our fabric cutting for the month. And we'll talk about cutting the harder to cut fabrics like felt. Felt has always been one that people always want to cut. Uh, wool felt, felt, um, some, some of the wools that you use for like, um, like wool applique, those cut really, really well with the rotary blade. So that's what we're going to use next week. And we'll talk about some of that. I don't have any wools, so we'll probably kind of stick with felt, but it's kind of the same concept. Um, but we'll do the setup on the machine so you can see there's a couple things you need to make sure you have turned on on the machine before you use your rotary blade, have it updated and that kind of thing. So then we'll talk about that. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. I hope you uh, that helped you with your fabric cutting with your scan and cut. And I will see you next week for the rotary blade. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.